Tiny House Prepper. Hi there, everybody. I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth, the Tiny House Prepper. Today we want to talk about budgeting. Our video is called Budgeting the Key to Financial Success. Yep, absolutely. Um, we have really uh, wanted to make a part of our channel include being able to get out of debt, stay out of debt. Um, and I think one of the most key things that we need to learn about in order to find that kind of freedom is budgeting. And um, I have found it to be a wonderful freedom because I can know that if a bill comes up due, I can pay it um, without it being any big deal. I can know that when I have periodic things that are due, I can sometimes pay them when you get the discount rather than later on when you end up paying penalties and interest and all sorts of stuff. And I've had to do that before years ago, that's for sure. Um, and the other thing is that um, I've really been able to feel like that if I need to get something and I've got the money for it, I can feel free to use the money for it. And so knowing that I've really got the money there when I need to spend it, and I'm not wondering, it's not nebulous, I know what I have because of the budgeting has been wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. You know, I <clears throat> I resisted budgeting for a long time. I, I knew about the importance of budgeting. I believed in, in it. But somehow I just kind of never got around to it. I think sometimes you felt like that a budget would be like really restrictive or, yeah, or you know, just... Yeah, and, um, and then we started to run into financial difficulties when, you know, in the crash of 08 when I lost my business. Um, and then I started driving a, a truck because my construction business fell apart. But we had, I had two years of unemployment and so we were like really trying to catch up and my income from the driving the truck at first wasn't as high as it was with the um, with the construction. Yeah. Yeah. So while I'm out on the road <clears throat> driving the truck, she instituted a budget. <laughs> yeah. Because now she was the one taking care of the bills because she was the one at home to do that. So she didn't really even tell me, but she instituted a budget. Well, um, I was home. I had had the stroke. I couldn't be working all the time anymore. He was on the road. You know, he's home maybe three and a half days a month. So I needed to pay the bills. So I very happily just... I mean, so you have to understand, I am the tightwad in the family. Yeah. I love duckies that line up in a row. Um, I love the idea of a budget. And, you know, I have to, to really give you, you know, some benefit of the doubt in the fact that really, up until everything kind of fell apart, um, generally money was there for things, you know. Right. And also, just like many millions of other Americans, we used credit, you know. And so, um, it probably didn't feel so necessary to you as it did later. But I was happy as anything to set up a budget. Right. Um, so, so now, several years later, how many years have we had this budget in place now? Four years? Five years? I, I say, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Four <laughs> to five. Yeah. yeah. I, I have discovered um, four years, okay. and I know why because of the stroke. Anyway, go ahead. I have discovered that it is absolutely freeing. Yes. It is so cool to just <clears throat> when something comes up, you have the money to pay it. You're That's not right. scratching your head saying, "How in the world am I going to do this?" It, it's wonderful. Um, I would never go back now. I can't imagine living without a budget. <clears throat> Hickey's gotten smarter and smarter, thank hasn't you, he? Thank you, dear, for yeah. pushing me into this. Um, yeah. If you, I, I, that's great. <laughs> if you watched our channel trailer, you know, we say on there that uh, this channel is about tiny house living and about prepping and about living and getting debt free. And up until now, we really haven't done much of anything with the debt freedom. And uh, kind of sorry about that, but we've just had so, so many different things to do. It's hard to kind of get to it all. So that's kind of where we're starting today and talking about debt freedom because. A budget is really necessary uh, if you want to get out of debt and if you want to really have a strong financial future. Uh, the first thing you need to do if you want to get out of debt is just simply stop using debt. Paying it off is a whole nother thing and we will have other videos in the future where we concentrate on how to actually 
uh, the best way to actually pay it off and get out of debt. But the first thing you need to do is just simply stop using credit cards or stop using debt of any kind. Yes. And the main way that you can do that is by instituting a budget. What do most people do when they get their paycheck? They go buy groceries. They go pay a couple of the bills that they have that are pressing. And then the, the rest of the money just sits in the, in the account and they just go out and spend it. You, you know? just, just use it. You just go out for a dinner and a movie and you use it and you, you, you just kind of like further it away. You don't know where it's going at the end of the week, at the end of the month, you don't even realize where it all went. And so you get to the end of the month and you don't have enough money. So then it's to survive the last week or the last couple days or whatever, you end up using credit. At least that's what we did. You end up using credit cards. Well, um, I can honestly say that I really felt like that it was always for something important. I think our situation... Well, yeah, that's a little bit of a different situation. Yeah. But, well, no, not really. I guess, you know, <clears throat> we didn't have a budget, so when things came up that we didn't have money for, we would uh, use a credit card, like new tires on a car. you got to get new tires. you got to have a car. you got to get That's the car right. through inspection, and if you don't have any money set aside, you got no choice but to use credit. I remember when you were a good-looking young soldier, about the time I met you. You were 19 when I first met you. And um, tell them how your, how your paycheck would go Yeah. back then. I was stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado at the time. That's where we met when I was stationed there. And I had, you know a place on post in the barracks where I could live and then I could uh, eat there in the mess hall. But I elected to live off post, which means that I paid rent for my little apartment. At that time in 1976, I only paid $75 a month for the rent. But I only got paid about 350 a month. <laughs> and I would get paid every two weeks. But I had no clue about budgeting. So I would get my paycheck and I would go pay my rent. And that was really in my car insurance that was really my only expenses and then the rest of the money I would just simply spend on anything that I saw and I would go on a spending spree for the first three or four days after every paycheck and then comes come down toward the end where I'm like five days before my next paycheck and not only did I not have any food I didn't have enough gas to drive back and forth to work so I had a van at the time so the last three or four or five nights I would actually park right outside of the barracks and sleep in the van because if I went home to my apartment, I wouldn't have enough gas money to get back to work. And you and, could eat in the mess hall. Yeah, I could eat yeah. in the mess hall. So, <laughs> you know, uh, that was just a very young, naive person who didn't know anything about budgeting, and I just blew my money. And now, uh, you know, that might be a little bit extreme, but I think that's what we all do. If the money's there, we spend it. You know, and. Uh, and credit makes it so easy to fill in whatever gaps. So, well, y yes, the, the gaps, right. So if the money's there, we spend it. And if it's not there, because we spent it, we use credit. And so, the, you know, it's always for necessary things. But the credit, the debt just builds higher and higher. And it becomes a stranglehold around your neck. Um, there's one thing I kind of wanted to say, because we're, we're going to be, at other times, really getting into how to get out of, you know, the, the debt. Right. But um, we just have to realize that... If we um, want to use credit to buy something, if we can't afford it now, what makes us think we're going to be able to afford it later? You're getting way ahead of us. Oh, did I get ahead of us? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. go we ahead. Have, we have notes. I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, dear. <laughs> so, most of us have it backwards because we get our check and then we do a couple of necessary things like groceries and then we spend all the money and then at the end of the month, when we have, still have bills due, all of a sudden we don't have any bill, we don't have any money to pay the bills, so we use credit cards or whatever. It should be the other way around. We should pay all of our bills first, and then we live on what's left. In fact, I got to get my Bible, which is up there. Okay. This works for you know for tithing. Um, in Malachi, it's, in Malachi three, it says to bring the the whole tithe into the storehouse. Um, but then in Exodus, what is it? Exodus 23:19, it says, "Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Bring the first fruits. Yes. Do it first, not last. 
You don't pay all your bills and go out to eat every night and then try to figure out how to tithe and how to pay your bills. Yeah, it just, it, that's not how we do it. Right. So that's where our budget comes in. <clears throat> So what we do, um, can, can I say something, and I don't think I'm jumping ahead on our sure. notes. Um, I think a lot of times we just don't really um, get realistic about things, and um, the reality is is that um, we can't pretend this stuff away, and so no matter how much we'd like to think it isn't so, this stuff's going to have to be paid. And it'll catch up with us if we don't pay it. So it may seem like, you know, why would I have to... It's kind of a drag to have to try to make sure that I've set money aside or that I'm going to pay things up front. But in the long run, it's a lot better because it, one way or another, it's going to have to be paid. And so um, it, it's it's part of just kind of growing up and realizing mm -hmm. that, that um, if we want to be able to stay on top of things and to have the freedom, then we're just going to have to take care of what has to be taken care of. Um, even if it doesn't feel really fun at first. I, you know. right. <clears throat> it's really a change, a change of, of mindset, a change of paradigm of how you spend your money. Um, yeah. But, you know, if if you just get your money and then you just go out and spend it and then you try to pay the bills at the end and you're spending beyond your means, you're spending credit and you don't really, really real, realize what you're doing, that's how you get into trouble. So what you need to do is pay your bills first. First of all, swear off of debt. Don't ever use debt. Don't ever use credit again. But then you pay your bills first, or you set aside the money to pay your bills first, and then you live on what's left. Switch it around. Pay it first. Live on what's left. Yeah. Then what happens is, if you see something that you really want, if you don't have enough money, cash, in the checking account or in your wallet to pay for it, you can't afford it. That's right. And that's that's the, it's the reality of it. If you, you use, can't afford it. <laughs> if you use credit to buy it, then you're going to pay for it, pay twice as much for it later by the time you pay the interest. So, pay. You're, you're sacrificing your future. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. So, pay your bills first, live on what's left, and if you don't have it in cash, you can't afford it. Right. And that's the big paradigm shift that will make the difference. Absolutely. So, you don't want to just kind of fritter away your money. You know, when I was a contractor, I would go out every morning. I would eat at McDonald's on the way to work, and then about 10 o'clock or so, I'd go out for a coffee break. Or in you know, in the summer, I'd get a big thing of Gatorade, and and then I'd go get a cheese steak or something at lunch, and then I'd go out in the afternoon and get another big thing of Gatorade. And when and I we really thought we had plenty of money. When I really yeah. sat down and looked at it, every time I would go get a Gatorade and a candy bar or, or a donut or something like that, I'd spend five bucks or seven bucks. It was unbelievable. By the time you put it all together, I was spending like thirty dollars a day just on frittering it away on food and snacks and things. And even now, driving in my truck, you know, I'm a truck driver, and every time I pull over for fuel or pull over to use the restroom, it's it's a, a tendency to want to buy a cup of coffee, you know cup of coffee, no big deal, right? Well, I could very easily spend $10 a day buying $2 cups of coffee because I like to drink coffee. So I just finally realized I was frittering that money away and now I um, I make a thermos of coffee at home before I go to work and it's considerably cheaper. So just notice what you're doing and stop frittering. But the way to, the best way to stop frittering is, like I said, pay the bills first, and then you can you have to live on what's what's left, whatever whatever's there. Yeah. So, okay, so let's get into the nuts and bolts a little bit of how how to do this. How do you create a budget? First thing you want to do is start a separate bank account. You don't want this commingled with your gen right. general fund bank account. It'll disappear. Now we first started with a savings account, but then we realized that didn't work for two reasons. One is the the interest that you get on it is is so minuscule that it's yeah. it's really insulting. <laughs> yeah. And the other is it's not as easy to access. Right. So and now it needs to be accessible. So now we just use a, we have a second checking account and we call it our savings account though it's really a our checking yeah. another checking. It's account. another checking account, right? So all of the money that we budget we put in we deposit into that separate checking account. Now. You want to budget mainly for periodic expenses. 
because these are the ones that'll sneak up. Right, you can also do it for monthly expenses, but periodic expenses are the important ones. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about, like for instance, our sewer bill. We pay our sewer every three months. Every three months. Well, if we didn't plan for it, then we would all of a sudden have $180 due? It's $200. $200? Yeah, Where gonna, that much every three months to flush our toilet. Right. So <laughs> what we do is, is divide the $200 by three months and figure out what it is for a weekly amount, because I get paid weekly from my trucking job. And every month, every week, every payday, do you remember how much it is? Yeah, it's working out pretty well for me just to put $15 a week into that account. Okay. By the time the bill comes, I can pay it. So every week we put $15 into that separate budgeting savings account. And so when the bill comes due in three months, we have the money that we need and we don't have to scramble to figure out how to come up with 200 bucks to pay the sewer bill. And we're going to show you more about this, but I mean, when that goes in there, you know, I'm writing that down on the spreadsheet so I know how much is in there. We'll talk more about that. Right, It's right. not just a bunch of money just sitting in there. Um, property taxes, same thing. We don't have any debt on our, our little tiny house here mm -hmm. and our land, so the property taxes are not included in a mortgage payment, which means that we have to come up with them every, every year. So we just took the annual amount of the property tax and divided it by 52 to figure out what the what the weekly amount would be. And every week we have that money deposited right directly into my checking account. Right. Into, into, our, into our savings account. I'm yeah. Sorry. The quote, quote, savings account. Yeah. yeah. So that when the tax bill comes, oh, is it wonderful to pay it when you get the discount. Yeah. Rather than, ah, where am I going to come up with this money? And then by the time you pay it, there's a penalty. We would always, uh, we would always wait until the tax part was just about ready to go to the tax auction, before we'd scrambled enough to come to come up with the money to, to, to save it from the auction. But now, as soon as we get the bill, she had, takes great pleasure in just writing it out and sending it in. Absolutely. Because we have the money in our in our budget savings account. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just always I've just always been like that. Yeah. I mean, I just yeah. Now. A very big expense for most people is yes. cars, vehicles. Yes. And an Underestimated. An awful lot of people have big car payments. Yeah. Um, we don't own, we don't owe anything on our car. No, no. But we still make a car payment. That's right. Every week we deposit a certain amount, but we don't give it to the bank. We put, we put it in our bank. We put it in our savings account to go towards the vehicle expense. Now, that does two things. First of all, when you go down to get it inspected and it's an $800 bill because you need four new tires and a couple of ball joints and a <laughs> yeah, tie rod. You never and, know. <laughs> you can just write out a check because you got the money in the vehicle in the vehicle fund. That's right. And it is such a joy now to be able to just, whatever is wrong with the car, just go get a fix. You got the money for it. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. The other thing is that any money that we don't spend towards repairs then is starting to be saved towards the purchase of our next vehicle. Now we eventually we'll have to get another one. Yeah, yeah. now we don't buy new ones. Um, no, but in fact, we'll talk sometime about what a bad mistake yeah, that is. But, you know, um, you can get good used cars for not a whole lot of money if you look around and if you have the cash to do it. And that's the way we do it. So now we're saving towards the purchase of a new a new car. And, and it's, it's Well, and it, it saves you on insurance, too. You know, that they're always just paid for. In other right. words, it's, it's just not having a debt on the car saves in a lot of ways. Right. Yes. Okay. And, and I just want to say, um, you know what you need in terms of a vehicle. Um, this is going to be a surprisingly larger amount than you think. But in the long run, if you're willing to sock that money away, it's going to be so worth it. Yeah. This is one of the larger amounts that we have to save. Yeah. But reality is you got to have a vehicle. Go ahead then. Okay, utilities. Yeah, now, this, is, this is cool. Utilities are, it's not a periodic expense, it's usually a monthly expense depending on how you heat your house. But <clears throat> in the summer, usually you only have electric. Say $75 a month for your electric bill. In the winter, you've got to pay for the heat on top of that. Whether you have electric heat or oil heat or propane or coal or... or buying wood. Or if you buy yeah. cordwood for your yeah. wood stove, it's going to cost you a lot more in the winter. So typically you spend like... Seventy-five dollars for electricity in the in the summer, and then in the winter with the heat, you could spend easily spend four hundred dollars a month or more. Yeah. Now this is it depends on the size of your house. We obviously live in a very tiny place, but right. you know it was not unusual for it to get pretty high um, in a regular big house. I mean that's just the reality of it. All right. of your utilities, if you have a cold winter, 
Um, or if you so. like, if you heat with oil, or if you heat with propane, you might get a, a delivery of oil or propane that comes every couple of months. And it's hundreds of dollars. Yeah, it could cost you six or seven hundred dollars to fill your tanks that last for a couple of months. So here's what we do. If you can figure out what your annual utilities expense is, including your electricity and your heat. Just go back through your checkbook or whatever you can do to get a handle on or make, how much it is. Or make your best guess. Yes. You know? Yeah. Figure out what your annual utilities are, divide that by 12, and then that's what you want to save every month. And what that does is it stabilizes your um, your, your utility payment. Right. Um, so you so don't have bad shocks in the winter. Instead of paying $75 a month in the summer and $400 a month in the winter, you might be able to average it out and just pay $200 a month year-round and then you don't get any surprises. And what happens is as you put that $200, for us we're paid weekly so it's $50 a week, into the utility fund, then we pay the, the utilities right out of that fund, but in the summer the fund balance grows bigger because we're putting in 200 and we're only pulling out 75 to pay the electricity. So then you're saving towards um, being able to pay the bigger bills in the winter. And it stabilizes your utility bill and it really right. works well. Now that's just, we're just grabbing numbers out of the air. This place is so small it doesn't cost us that much. But we're I'm just... I'm talking about some, uh, I was thinking about what about what we paid when we lived in our last... In the last big house. Big house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, now it's the same principle. You just look at your annual expense or your quarterly expense for a periodic bill and divide it down by whatever your paycheck is, whether you're paid weekly or quarterly or monthly, and that's how much you save each month. But I just want to touch on some other things here. Uh, I mentioned utilities. Insurance, if you pay car insurance quarterly or mm -hmm. semi-annually, you can do that so you don't have a big bill. Okay, there's also taxes, and I'm talking income tax. Now, if you're an employee, you have your income taxes withheld by your employer, so that's not a problem. But if you're self-employed, it can be a serious problem. Yeah. Uh, when I was self-employed as a, as a contractor, we didn't really set aside and send in the estimated taxes the way we were supposed to. We always felt like we couldn't afford it. Yeah. You know, we just didn't feel like we could have enough, we had enough money so to be able to afford it. We would get it. the check, you know, from a, finishing a contract, and it would pay off all of our bills and for the past couple months because we only got paid <laughs> Yeah. Every time I finished a contract, which was every couple months, and we just felt like we couldn't, we couldn't figure out how to pay the taxes, estimated taxes. So the end of the year would come, and we'd owe the IRS thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, and we'd always send the return in. We just couldn't pay all the money. Yeah. Then we'd end up setting up payments. <clears throat> right. So it ended up eventually where we were paying on on payments for several years. Paying, yeah, paying on several years worth of back taxes, and, and that just was not that, a good situation. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. So <laughs> it's not good. Now, as a truck driver, my income or is my taxes are withheld by my employer and sent in, so that's not a problem. But now we're starting to get some other income that uh, that I'm earning that's self-employed, and so now in our budget we are very careful to put aside the uh, the taxes that we need. So and to send in the the payments. Yeah. So yeah. our our accountant told us how much we should be withholding from each each uh, amount that I get. So as soon as I get that amount, we immediately take that percentage and put it right into our budget savings account so that we can send in the estimated taxes quarterly. And it's such a relief to be able to send in those taxes and yes. not have to deal with the IRS. <laughs> Believe yeah. me, you don't want to do it's, that. It's, it's <laughs> painful to really look at the amount that it has to be. Right. You know, I, I, I end up ch just taking this huge chunk out. But... Um, that's the reality of what we would have to pay, and to know that's caught up, you know, and that I can just sit down and and, and send that in. Oh yes, it is yeah. a huge relief. Yeah. Taxes are just part of life. Jesus, they were, t you know, telling Jesus, you know, should we pay taxes to, to, you know, the Roman government? And Jesus, said, well, who's on the coin? And they said, well, Caesar's face. And and Jesus, said, well, give Caesar what's due Caesar, and give God what is due God, yeah. you know. And so it's something that we need to do. Yeah. And the next one, this one's yours. Right. I was just, I was just thinking that having to put such a big chunk out for taxes <laughs> is kind of my least favorite. Although I'm very glad to be able to do it. But my most favorite budgeting is that I set money aside every week for Christmas, and um, it's just little bits. 
you know, little bits of money, but it adds up over the course of time so that I feel like that once Christmas comes, I can kind of relax and enjoy shopping for kids and grandkids. And I, I enjoy that. I, I, it's a little tiny bit, but it adds up. You know, we were talking about how that we don't really keep track like we should, all of us, of what we spend. It just goes out in little bits and little bits, and it really adds up. And it's very important to, to get a handle on that. But you know, the other side of that is that when you're saving a little bit at a time, you don't notice it as much. It doesn't feel painful, but it adds up and it adds up. And if you just do it, you know, and give yourself plenty of time, it's amazing what you can save without feeling all that, that much of a pinch every time you save it. So I love my Christmas fund. Um, is it okay right here to talk a little bit about a special occasion thing? Sure. Um, another thing that's just a smart idea is if you know you've got something special coming up, start saving for it way ahead. Um, that trip we took down um, to where we were able to go to Lancaster for our anniversary that we did a video about before, I saved, I think, four months at least ahead of time, a little bit, a little bit after a little bit after a little bit, um, so that when we went, we could cover our hotel, we could cover the cost of the tickets for Sight and Sound, which was so wonderful. Um, and we could feel like we could have a few meals out and relax and enjoy it. And I wasn't doing it on credit. I was doing it because I'd saved the money and I knew how much I had. And I enjoyed that. It was so I, nice to go down there and we say that we have this amount of money that we can just blow for the weekend. Yeah. And without feeling guilty because we had saved it just for that. That's right. I had a weekend of kind of feeling a little bit rich. I mean, I bought the fanciest measuring cups. <laughs> and there's a space for them and I use them all the time and they're beautiful. So I bought rich person measuring cups because I'd been saving for a long time and so that can be very worth it you know if you got something special coming up tuck the money away um, and just to do something special right. mm -hmm. you want me to do that one um, another thing that may not feel really possible at first because we know people often start out having to pay off a lot of debt and a lot of things going on and you know we need to get bills paid we need to get our taxes paid Tithing is such a good idea, and it honors God, and He's faithful to us um, when we tithe. He's so faithful to us. And so this may seem sort of impossible, but we really want you to look at the, doing the best you can to try to start just doing some savings. Um, maybe if you see some things in your life where you don't realize that you've been spending that much, maybe you could back off on it with whatever discretionary money you have um, you know, after bills are paid. But anything you can start socking away literally for savings is a good idea. Ultimately, saving at least 10% um, can really help because, you know, we have things that break down. Washing machines need to be replaced. Things come up in life. Um, sometimes like an unexpected medical bill that had some extra on it that we weren't planning on. So having some money in savings. This isn't talking about the car fund. That's for cars. This isn't the tax fund, that's for taxes. This is savings because, you know, the miscellaneous category in our life can sometimes add up amazingly. And so we really encourage you to do your best to try to start saving even just a little bit for now because ultimately you will be very glad you've got that. Okay. Now, on monthly expenses, um... This is going to depend a little bit on how you're paid, um, you know, how you want to handle this. Right now, Bill gets paid weekly. Um, the disability that I have coming in comes monthly. Um, some people get paid, you know, twice a month. There's just all sorts of different ways. If you're a contractor or you're an entrepreneur, sometimes it's feast or famine. Sometimes you don't get paid, and then when you do get paid, it's a large amount. So about all I can really recommend with this is um, to you know, be sure that you are saving ahead or setting money aside for some of the monthly bills. Like, like say, for instance, it wouldn't do us a whole lot of good if we spent, um, you know, the paychecks because we get them weekly and then I've got bills that I've got to pay at the beginning of the month. I can't rely on the last week's paycheck to pay those bills. And so um, if you know you've got bills coming up, uh, find an average cost, and in whatever way you can set money aside for it. Like I said, it depends on how often you're paid. Be sure you tuck that money 
a way and have it ready so that when you need to pay the bill, you can. Um, you know, it's, you know, the things that are, are by the month, um, every single month, you know, some of them may be due, like in the middle of the month or the beginning or what, whatever, however that's done. But just remember that you want to try to make sure that you're hanging on to the money you need for that. Um, and so that's just going to depend on how you can work it. But the most important thing to remember is that when you do get paid, take care of the bills. We really recommend tithing. But, you know, take care of the bills immediately and first. You know, now, don't use up all your grocery money if you know you're going to get another paycheck to pay something that's due in the next two weeks. I mean, that's just common sense. You know, look at what money you've got coming in and figure out what can I pay when. Um, by setting money aside ahead, which I've been working on now for a long time, um, I pay all my bills at the beginning of the month. Um, and just but the second that one comes in, if it doesn't get there right at the beginning, I can pay it. Because I've started working to where I've got money set aside mm -hmm. ahead of time. That's the ideal kind of situation. But the most important thing is that be careful to make sure your bill, that the monthly stuff gets paid before you start um, buying a bunch of other stuff. Because those bills have to be paid. There were so many years where a bill would come in and we didn't have the money to pay it and you would hold it right until the very last or sometimes even late until we had the money to pay it. Right. And you should see the, the the joy that she has and the smile on her face when a bill comes in. She She's almost giddy about <laughs> being able to just sit down and pay it right then because we have the money in our savings, in our budget savings account to, to do it. Right. So I can cover that for several reasons. One is that way I know I can pay it on time Everybody's happy with us. We don't have any anybody, you know, hollering for anything. But it also just gets it out of my mind. Yeah. It's done. I don't have to wonder about it or worry about it. Now it's the mailman's responsibility to make sure, you know, that it gets delivered and it's it's out of my hair. And um, I I know I honestly really love that. Well, another aspect of this too is that you know I said that if you set aside all the money for your bills first then you, you live on what's left and if you see something that you want and you don't have the money you just simply don't can't afford it but the, the flip-flop of that is yes. if you see something that you want and you've got the money you can buy it guilt-free you yes, can buy yes, yes, it yes. without worrying about it you yes. can buy it with joy because you know you have the money and you're not robbing you know, Peter, to pay Paul, you're not robbing the money that you should be paying your bills with. You're not using credit because if the money's there, you've got it and you can spend it. And that, that brings great joy. Well, it's, it's made me feel so much freer sometimes just to get some of the things I've needed or something that I really like. And that brings up one other thing that's been very interesting for me. I tried to really, like, write it down the best I could when I got the, the thought of it. But, you know, I, we can't bring a lot of stuff into this little space. There just isn't room for it. And so it was exciting with the measuring cups because I needed to replace my other ones. They were like dying. They're breaking apart. Yeah, if you if you haven't seen any of, any of our other videos, we live in a tiny house. We live in a 32 foot RV. It's yeah. uh, 250 square feet. So right. In fact, this little teeny bump out's where we put our chairs, and the rest of it's only seven feet wide. So um, yeah, we live in a pretty small place here, and um, so but I could get those measuring cups because I, I knew I could use them, and they're beautiful, and we found a place to hang them on the wall. You know, they're just in the kitchen, just lined up down the wall. Um, and so, one of the things that's happened is that the, the paradigm shift, uh, you know, a paradigm is a worldview. It's how you look at life. It's your basic way of approaching things. It's an interesting word. It looks like paradigm. Um, it's, no. it's your understanding of truth upon which you base your decisions. Right, right. It's called a paradigm. And we have gone through and are going through a big paradigm shift with living in a very s small space. Um, we are not minimalists. I try to, you know, I, I try to, you know, when my grandkids are here, we still bake things and do things. And I've got mementos around and, you know, we, we are, it's kind of like a normal place, just little. Um, I guess what you could call normal. You know, I can't let it get cluttered, that's for sure. But, um, I had to go through a real process, and what that has ended up doing is the only stuff I have around um, is what I really need, really need, or what I love the most. 
And so, um, you know, that, that affects what you buy. I can't go out and just, I've never been a big, you know, shoe person, but I can't go out and buy every pair of shoes I love. Even if I had the money, I don't have anywhere to put them. So I, I, I wrote this down and I, it's really, uh, I've had two paradigm shifts and they've helped each other. Really getting on, bud, on a budget has been made more possible by our tinyism. In other words, we don't spend tons and tons of money. But if I run across something that I really love, and I know I've got room for it or I really need it, and I know that I've got the money because I know what my budget says and I can afford it, there's a lot of joy in just being able to get something and not have to feel guilty. You know, I ain't, those the measuring cups are were like more expensive than any measuring cups I've ever gotten in my life. We got those on our little. Um, they're stainless. Emperor's. They're stainless steel. Well, and they're and they're. they're Artistic. They're artistic. They're beautiful. And they're hanging on my wall, so they're artsy, you know. But I use them all the time. And um, we had the money to be able to... I've never spent that... How much were those things? It was like $35 or something. Yeah, it was like ridiculously expensive. And it was wonderful because I had money set aside. I enjoy them. They make me smile. And I can use them. And so being content with less and budgeting gives me more peace to spend money I know I can spare, but only for what I can fit into my life and only what I love and need the most. And I, I wanted to read that because I think I said it better when I wrote it down. So that has been one thing that's been really nice is, you know, I, I can't go out and spend a ton anyway. I don't have anywhere to put it, but I can enjoy when I do spend because I can pay my bills. Oh. So that's the basis of the philosophy behind budgeting and you know, you figure out each, you look at each one of your bills and figure out what your payment should be for that bill per paycheck, whether it's weekly or every two weeks or once a month. Or if you get paid feast and famine, you know, when you get the big payments, figure it all out right. to make sure you have spaced that money out properly. But how do you actually do that? Yeah. Well, first of all, like I said, you open a separate account and you put, we, though ours is a checking account, we call it our savings account. We put all of our budgeted money into our savings account every week. And it's all commingled. You know, the car fund is in there, the utility fund is in there, the tax fund is in there. So how do you keep it all straight? Right. And well, I've, got, I've got a checkbook where I can write checks out of there if I need to. Right. Yeah. Well, I actually do it on the computer on a Excel spreadsheet where I have a separate column for each fund that makes the total. He's my accountant hero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometime in the future, I may do a video that shows how to build the uh, the spreadsheet. If you've never done that, it can be kind of confusing, but it's really convenient once you get it set up. Yeah. Um, if you're spreadsheet savvy, then you can figure out how to do it yourself. But so what I'm going to do here is I, I don't actually use it on paper, but you can do it on paper, on accounting paper. So I just wrote down some paper with some columns, and I'll show you how I do that. And I, Hopefully you'll be able to see it on the paper. Okay. Okay, so we finished the, filming the video. I started editing it, editing it and discovered that it's way too long. So yeah. we decided to cut it into sections. So we're going to end this video here. So this now becomes part one of our budgeting video. And in part two, then I'll talk about the nuts and bolts of how to actually set it up in your account and on the, on the paper and with the columns and all that. We really um, hope that the things that we have shared um, have really helped you to see um, that there's a lot of benefits um, to having a budget, which we have really discovered to be true. So we hope to see you in the next section. The next one will be a lot shorter. It's just going to show you kind of how to lay the whole thing out. And um, appreciate you guys, um, you know, hanging in there with us as we've tried to explain all this. And we will see you soon. So, so as soon as I uh, get the next video up, hopefully it will be soon, I'll put a link somewhere up here and also in the description down below so that you can find part two. Yep, yep. So as usual, you know, um, like and subscribe. And... <laughs> Um, thanks you guys for just you know being a part of our lives. So thank you. We okay. love you and God bless. All right. See you next time. Yep. Soon. <laughs>